Hello everyone, in this video I will uh, try to demonstrate the, the work, or if you can say work, I've been doing on the Raspberry Pico. So I started to port uh, the most of the emulator of the MCU uh, project to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, hopefully there are lots of uh, examples uh, on the Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, like the VGA library which is their uh, standard in the SDK. Uh, I also found a nice uh, web page where uh, a guy had uh, ported some um, uh, SD FAT library to access the SD card and finally some uh, basic uh, audio uh, using PWM uh, output of the Pico. So the setup is uh, very similar to what uh, was used actually for the TNC. Uh, so you have the Pico over here. You have the set of resistors which are used for the VG. I simplified the original, uh, what is called uh, scan Pico line or something like that, which is the VG library of the Pico. I made a version which is only using uh, basically uh, 8 lines for uh, RGB actually. So it's RGB on 8 bit. So 3 bit, 2 bits for blue, 3 bits for green and 3 bits for red. The original library was 16 bit but then you sacrifice a lot of IO pins so I found it was uh, better to use it like this. Um, then you have of course the SD card so it's just an SD card uh, which has been expanded to uh, be able to access the uh, pins of the things but actually it's using SPI to communicate and then you have a small circuitry for the PWM uh, audio output. You won't hear much the audio because it's just a small headset which is there. But some of the emulators of course are working but not all of them. Like, uh, I'm still struggling with the sound of the Coral 64 emulator, but okay, it's a beginning, let's see. So, first thing I ported was the actually the VGA library I had done for the, the TNC, had the, what I call the graphics engine. So, it's a small engine that allows you to make like scrolling, parallax scrolling, and support up to uh, 64 sprites. So, I just uh, used that as a base uh, to wrap up the original library of. Uh, uh, of the Pico and then offer the API to my set of emulators uh, which are all part of the MCU project. So the first one is indeed uh, this. All the binaries are part of the project so every time I will just reset uh, the system and uh, boot in a mode where I just can drag and drop uh, the binary uh, as the Pico is emulating a, a masterish device where you can just uh, use to drag and drop and flash a new software. So it's the same interface as on the TNC. First one is the ZX80 emulator. Uh, I will, uh, I can just take a demo. Uh, I will just run EO. So I will not really do anything. Sometimes I get some strange effects uh, on the VG library. I get some red lines. Uh, I think here you won't see it, but on some emulator you might see that. I will just let run the demo to show you. That's just the ZX80 emulator uh, running there. Uh, I think that is running full speed. There is no need for uh, many things. Uh, if you recognize the game Hero on the ZX81, that's it. I will just show that sound is also there. Uh, oh, sorry, maybe I go directly to the next uh, emulator. Um, then I will then try the maybe the Spectrum first. Spectrum emulator, also uh, based on the code of the TNC, just porting it to this one. Here maybe I can run uh, a demo. Uh, you might hear uh, audio or not, but just to illustrate basically that it works. I'm not sure you will hear anything from the audio. But so that's the spectrum. Then we can go to the next one, being the, the Atari 800. Again, I just drag and drop everything. Also sound. 
is working. I'll just run another one. So I use this small joystick to control everything. Uh, if you remember, pitfall also here. I have two extra buttons, uh, like the emulator was needing some key to start. You see this disturbance sometimes you have on the screen, but okay. not fully running full speed actually that one. Then the next emulator.